the year-long reign of Alexander. Alexander was Eastern Roman Emperor for a little over a year. Despite his short reign, it was an interesting one. He was the only son of Basil I that was recognized as his genuine offspring, unlike his other sons. Constantine, Leo VI, and Stephen I, whose father was most likely former emperor, Michael the Drunkard. Their father, Basil I, had his cohorts assassinate Michael by cutting off his hands before skewering him with a sword. Their mother was Empress Eudokia Indurinia, who was the mistress of Michael the Drunkard before marrying Basil I after his death and being the mother of Leo and Alexander. Alexander was born on November 23, 870 AD, and at the age of nine was named co-emperor along with his brother Leo after the death of their older brother Constantine, who died from a fever. Alexander was officially named sole emperor on May 11, 912 AD after the death of Leo, who died from disease of the bowels. Before his death, he named Alexander emperor of the Romans. One of the first acts as emperor was to get rid of the patriarch of Constantinople, Euthemius. When he was excused, the clergy set upon him like wild beasts. They struck out with their fist, hooked out his beard, beat upon his neck, called him a defiler of other men's wives, an interloper, an adulterer, before he was shipped off to be exiled. He also sent Leo's illegitimate son, Constantine, mother, Zoe with the coal black eyes, off to a nunnery. Alexander spent most of his reign partying, drinking, playing polo, and living a decadent lifestyle, according to historians of the era. He didn't like being emperor, so he decided to have fun. He spent a lot of his free time hunting and spending time with wizards and shady corrupt people whom he appointed in his government on a whim. When he saw Halley's Comet streak across the horizon during the summer, he felt it was a vision of bad tidings to come. The ruler of the Bulgarian Empire, Simeon, sent a delegation of ambassadors to Constantinople to meet with Alexander, asking if he wished to continue the peace treaty his brother Leo signed. He refused and declared the peace treaty null and void. Around this time, the Bulgarian Empire was becoming a huge threat to the Eastern Roman Empire. The two kingdoms were on the verge of another war. The first one ended during the reign of Leo VI because of a peace treaty and the money that he sent Simeon annually as a tribute. But Alexander just voided it, and it was only a matter of time before hostilities renewed. Alexander's personal life was also falling apart. His impotence, which failed to produce him an heir, had driven him to paganism. He sought the advice of soothsayers, who said that if he sacrificed offerings to a bronze pig that was in a hippodrome, it would not only cure him, but give him a lengthy reign like his brother Leo. Besides gorging himself on fine foods and drinking himself into a stupor, Alexander loved to play polo, and on June 6, 913 AD, after an all-nighter binge of food and booze, he went and played polo with his buddies all day long. After the last match, he started to develop a chronic pain in his stomach. As soon as he arrived at the Imperial Palace, it grew worse, and he began to hemorrhage from his nose and groin. Alexander was carried off to his bed, and as he lay dying, he called in his nephew Constantine and named him the new emperor from his deathbed. Eight-year-old Constantine VII was left with a second war with the Bulgarian Empire on the horizon and with a rival from his father's past, General Constantine Dukas, looking over his shoulder trying to steal his crown. Things weren't looking too good for the boy emperor who just inherited an empire from a slovenly drunken dead uncle. Thanks for watching another episode of the Byzantine History of the Eastern Roman Empire. My name is Joseph Ulevis, your illustrious narrator, and I bid you adieu.